All right, I guess we'll get started. Hey, cool. Welcome to Join the Club, the subscription model. My name is Jason Nickerson, and I am a Joomler. How many people here um, have a profile up on the Joomla volunteer portal? That's my first question. Um, I do not know, actually. Hey, nobody. Um, do you know that this exists? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this was started in 2014. So four years ago, uh, Sander started this, the volunteer portal, and this is not just for team members. It is for everybody that's in Joomla. You can go to Joomla and go to the community and go to the volunteers portal, and you can set up your own profile on there and show that you're a Joomler. Basically, you can put in your Joomla story, a little bit about yourself, and then it shows if you're a team member. This is uh, proven really well for me as far as <clears throat> getting contacts in Joomla. Uh, people reach out to me all the time, ask me for help or find out what I'm doing. So if you're looking for contacts within the community, it's great to put yourself up here. And the reason I put this up here is everywhere I go, nobody knows about it. And we really need to show our strength in numbers because it's grown a lot. But when I look at it and see how many Joomlers are out there, I think now there's um, about 2,000 people up there. That's just a fraction of what we are. So, like I said, I'm a Joomler. I'm on here. You should be too. Um, I'm also the team lead for the capital team. Uh, the capital team does the finance, does the sponsorships that make Joomla run and keeps the lights on. I also have a day job that I do. I have a Joomla template and extension club called uh, Joomla XTC, and we have had a subscription service for 10 years now. I'm also the organizer of Joomla Day Florida and the Joomla user group in Tampa, Florida, where I live. And if you want to reach out to me after the session, you can find me on Twitter or on Facebook. I'll show that again. So the subscription model has been around for a long time. But right now, with e-commerce, everybody's embracing it. You can get all sorts of services, um, online supplies. And over the past five years, it's grown over 200%. Who here remembers the very first subscription they subscribed to? What was it? It was actually uh, like their, their Mickey Mouse books. Like I was, I think, 14 or 15 or something like that. So um, this was my, my first subscription that I signed up to. This was uh, the Columbia Record and Tape Club. Columbia House started in like 1955 in America. In the 70s and 80s, they started a mail order service. And they had this great offer to hook you in. It was 13 records or tapes for a dollar. And this is back when, the, when they had 8-track tapes and records. It went down to a penny during, when the CDs came out. And so the way it worked was you could pick all of the records that you wanted, and they would send you a nice box. you get your box, and then you were committed to buy over the next three years. I think it's... Um, <laughs> nine more selections over the next three years. And the way that they would do this is they would mail you their pick of the month, the one that they wanted to sell the most. You would get it in the mail, and then you could either keep it and pay for it or return it. So like you, I did this when I was young. My mother really wondered, what happened? How did she get this box of records? And then she found out that, oh, I'm in this contract. So this was before we had any terms of uh, you can buy online. All I had to do was get a dollar and put it into an envelope. So I've been part of subscription models for most of my life. So some of the biggest models that are out there right now, there's three top models. There is the uh, curation model, and this falls into the record and tape club. Um, it's about selling um, anything from boxes of um, beauty supplies, uh, boxes of food to you, um, just about anything apparel. Now you can get everything shipped to you in a nice little box every month. And this is a, just a pretty big model right now. It's a, one of the biggest. The replenishment model 
<coughs> is uh, basically for goods and services that you um, use over and over again. This is uh, one of my current subscriptions. It's uh, a shaving club, and they basically send me um, new razors every month so I don't have to go out. And this one, <laughs> and as you see, they're, they're really good. Um, they have a great advertising campaign. So this really is um, changing our lives. You know, we're very busy in our life, and by being able to take care of all these needs, I think I've got a subscription to a shaving club, my um, uh, air conditioner filters, because I forget to change them. They come on all the time. So what we're doing now is we're actually able to automate our lives. You know, in software and whatever, we like to let the, the robots work for us and automate as many processes as we can. And now in our actual daily lives, because we're busy going here and there, and just to, to cut one thing off of the checklist and just have it show up magically at your door um, is very popular. Um, Amazon is really taking over on this one. You can subscribe for just about any of their products. If you look, you'll see if it's um, uh, household goods or whatever, there is a um, subscription where you can just get it right to your door. Um, I know a few people that travel all the time, and they're not at home, and they don't have a lot of time at home. Um, they're on the road most of the time. so. I end up going over their house and find a bo boxes like this at their door because they just have it come. They don't go to the grocery store anymore. They, there's an, even an app in, uh, in the States. It's called um, Drizzly, I believe. And um, you get liquor or beer to your door in 45 minutes. So we're really coming to a society that is completely aut automated. And subscriptions are at the front of it. Next is um, the digital assets model. This is the one that um, we probably know a lot about because it covers everything from uh, content, say the um, New York Times, um, to the Adobe Cloud, to um, any software as a service product that we're using. And this model is um, really starting to take off. Um, right now, since uh, Adobe put out Creative Cloud, they are now 55% of their total revenue comes from the Creative Cloud. The New York Times, I believe, is at 62% now is digital subscriptions. And that's something that was a really hard thing to move people over from it. So the digital assets model is pretty much so where we lie in all this. So digital assets are for unlimited on-the-go access. Um, curation it falls into uh, product variety. And uh, replenishment it saves us time and money. But how, how do we fall into this with Joomla? So number one, we, we are a digital asset. You know, we are an intangible product. Um, so digital assets are digital products like templates, extensions. Um, the curation of these products, because we like to collect assets for our projects. Uh, we get um, download extensions all the time and use them in over several different products. And then we have the replenishment that really is you know, product updates. And right now in Joomla, we're, we basically have two different subscriptions that we, we look at. Uh, we have the club plan, which uh, features bundled products. Um, you know, you can join the template club and get all the products uh, for one low price. Um, you can get product updates, and you can get product support. And then we have our, uh, the single purchase of extensions, which most people do put a, um, a time limit on, like maybe a um, one year, six months. And with that, you get the product you get product updates, and you get product support. So today, I really want to focus more or less uh, on the club plans and how we're actually doing the club plans. So the key factors if you're starting a club plan or if um, <clears throat> you want to know more about it, it's the price, the duration, and um, the renewal. These are the three factors when you're starting one that you need to think about. You need to think about how you're going to, to price your subscription, you know, how long should the subscription go, and um, what are you going to do about the renewals of subscriptions? So how many people in here currently have a site that runs on subscriptions? OK, so do you, um, this is a tricky subject. Do you, do you use auto-renew with your subscriptions? Like PayPal offers a, um, you know, auto-renew every year. OK, so uh, I've talked to a lot of people. There's half people say, oh, no, we, we don't want to do that. We don't want the customer, you know, just calling us going, oh, you ought to renew me. Um, that should be in your terms of service. Um, then other people say it's good. I'm of the camp that it's really good. Because here's the, the fact of it, is that 
when somebody subscribes to you and you, their subscription is running out, you have a couple things you can do. You can let them know by email, hey, in a week your subscription is running out. You know, maybe you can give them an upsell and say, here's a, you know, a coupon for 20%. Okay, they're gone. What do you do then? Okay, you can send them another email and go, oh, we're sorry you left. You know, but no contact. You're not actually talking to them. With the auto renew, you might get a small percentage of customers that did not read the terms of service and did not understand that they were joining a subscription and they're going to come to you and you're going to get a support ticket or on the phone, they're going to be upset. They're going to go, hey, you charged my PayPal account. You took money out of my account. Re return my money now. Okay. Well, we just, we're talking to them now. With the other way, there, there's no communication. So now you've got communication. So now you can say, oh, I'm so sorry. Here, could you please read our terms and services? You know, I can refund your money. Or would you like me to extend your membership with a 50% discount? Um, any kind of communication. The, uh, the other way, there is no communication. In my business, I ran it completely on auto renew. And yeah, every month I had uh, maybe two or three people that didn't want to resubscribe. And I could refund them. Some of them I kept, some of them I didn't. So this went on for a few years. And then I started to look around at what everyone else did and said, people were telling me, oh, it's not good, it's not good. Okay, we'll change. We're not gonna do the auto subscription. For two years now, I've lost that income. My income has gone down by 30% by not having the auto renew. And all it did was save me a little time not doing those support tickets and whatnot. So I'm a true believer in the, the auto renewal. The next thing is the, the current model we have. We've had this model in Joomla since the beginning. Um, I'm sure we've all seen this uh, chart before. So you've got a $59 option, a $99 option, uh, oh, a $299 option. Okay, so what? It's three months for one, it's six months for the other, it's one year. So uh, what do you think is the most popular one here? Yeah, the $59. $59, usually it's the smallest plan, you know, because people, when they come, they, they want to get started. They want to find out, um, you know, they're, they don't maybe trust your company yet, and they want to find out, oh, do you do good support, you know? And a lot of people, you know, hey, they're smart. They're not going to need, um, you know, forum support or whatever. Um, $59 will be fine with me. I can download all the templates and all the extensions and whatever. Then the $59 is, um, it is an entry point, too. You know, it is, we people that do this um, intend on, you know, getting people, upselling them to, to a larger package. Say they get done with their three months and then you can say, okay, well, would you like the larger package at a reduced rate and you know, get them involved in the yearly subscription. But what, how, what do you think it would do if uh, we did this? $12, $19. By doing it per month, we can pull the initial price down, and we can pull it down very far. And what this will do is it automatically lets them know that they're paying per month. There is going to be a recurring charge. The downside of this is, well, somebody can log into my site and for $12 sign up, and then what if they cancel? Well. Adobe has, has kind of figured this out a bit. There's a few ways you can do it. You could go ahead and say, well, it's going to be you know, $30 um, to sign up and then $12 a month. Or what Adobe does now, they have their annual thing. I don't know if any of you use Creative Cloud and have tried to downgrade it or cancel it. Well, when you do that, um, all of a sudden, a $25 charge appears on your credit card or whatever. And you say, what's this? Well, you canceled your account before your annual subscription was over. I did this with Adobe after being on Creative Cloud for about five years. I downgraded because I had the full cloud and all I needed was some of the graphic stuff. I was using a different editor. And called and said, what is this? Well, I've been with you for five years. What's well, $25 because you didn't end your full year. Well, I'm in four years now. So a little back and forth with them again. So now I'm talking to them. They, they refunded my money. So that's in, in the terms. My mistake that I didn't read the terms. Their mistake that they don't honor once you cross a year. But you can easily do something like if, if you had a three-month plan that was $39, you could easily say, well, hey, this is, um, you must do three months or there's this fee. 
There's ways to do it now in PayPal. You have to, you have to manually do it. Uh, I spoke to them. There's some development going on there as well as um, I think two checkout just got by, bought by Avantgate. So um, they're, you know, they're moving forward because the subscription models are moving forward. So all these payment processors are going to have to deal with this. The other nice thing about this, this monthly thing is that by keeping the price so low, when it comes time to sit down with your wife, your partner, and go over the finances, you know, well, it comes up, well, here's that $99 charge. <coughs> hmm, do we need that? By, by setting a smaller thing, you can overlook that. You know, I look at things that I, when I'm going through, okay, well, I need Netflix, I need this. Um, well, it's, it's only this much a month. So by doing a monthly thing, you can also keep that revenue coming in because that's very important with a, a subscription service. You need that revenue coming in. When you just sell something outright or for access for a year, you get that money, but then you put it in. If you just get it every month, even when you know your normal sales are kind of dipping, like through the summer generally, Joomla has had that. You know, it's we've gone, you know, summertime's a little slower. You have that recurring revenue. So um, one plan that wasn't up here is called the lifetime subscription. Um, lifetime subscriptions have, um, they've been around in Joomla a little bit. I was, uh, I hired a, a marketing professional um, back in 2010 when my company started in 2008 and we were doing really well and we weren't doing any um, marketing, we weren't doing any newsletters, we were doing nothing for marketing. We were basically on the Joomla extension directory and um, found uh, great things from that and then started putting out templates and our, the company was doing wonderful. That was during what I like to call the golden years of Joomla when it was everything was new and fresh. You know, now there's we've all seen all these extensions on the Joomla extension directory. There's we know what's going on. So this marketing person told me, well let's start up your, your newsletters. Let's do this. Have you considered the lifetime subscription? Mm, what's that? Okay. He said, well you can charge um, <coughs> another company out there, um, another Joomla place. We started that and that worked for them. Um, well, you can start at $899. Okay, great. So started that, had some sales for lifetime subscriptions. And then, as you probably know with Joomla, our, our market has gotten a little smaller and a little smaller over, you know, the last, last 10 years. So as things got smaller, okay, so I'm going to start to bring the lifetime subscription down. Okay, we'll bring it down to $499, $399. Okay, well, now, you know, money starts to not come in. Well, what do we do? Okay, let's do a sale. Let's put it on sale for like $199. Wow, that worked great. Look at all that money we got. We keep doing that and we keep doing that. And all of a sudden, we have all these 2,000 members with a lifetime subscription and we don't have any revenue coming in. So I would completely suggest to stay away from Lifetime subscriptions. The only time that I would say you might want to use that is if you're launching a new product and you say, okay, well, I've got 50 people that I'll give a lifetime subscription to. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with all these customers that you can't support because you don't have the income. Um, just a side note, it could work also, but if it's not on an extension basis, so if you're selling an online course for physical health or something, then you can have also a lifetime because it will not cost you that much just to keep it on the server so people have access to it. Right, exactly. But from, yeah. yeah. But you have to maintain software. Yes, but yeah, if, yeah, if it's a maintain or if it's a support, if it's something that requires you to sit down and do something on a daily basis, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a trap. So customer retention and the upsell, that's the thing that we can also do with our with our subscriptions. Number one, to keep customers, you have to keep them happy. You know, and when they're joining a club, make them feel like they're in a club. You know, start to send creative newsletters out just for the club members. Um, give them special access. Let them know that you care. You know, if you're doing support tickets for them, um, if you're just find out what system you're using, find out if you can keep track of those support tickets. You know, because when it comes to the Time for renewal, if you're not doing the auto subscribe, if you're just doing the uh, let them renew, you can send them a really nice statement. You know, okay, you're about to, about to, you're, you're about to expire on our club, but hey, guess what? 
Um, we've been watching you. We've completed, you know, 50 of your tickets. We've done this. We've released this many templates. You know, show them that they have a personal relationship, and because that really matters. And then, uh, upselling services. That's another thing that you can do if you are sell if you're doing Joomla stuff. Um, why not when they do the subscription? Why not offer them hosting? You know, there's. Um, many hosting hosts out there that you can connect with. Um, Cloud Access, which is launching the, um, the free Joomla launch site. Um, they can spin up a Joomla site that you can basically connect with their API and you can say, do you want hosting? You can offer hosting, you know, and sell them hosting and make a few dollars and put them with a host, especially if you're dealing with your own products. Um, find a host that um, your products are guaranteed to work on. You know, I don't, you don't know how many times that I, I make templates and I talk to people and with support tickets, okay, well, oh, well, this isn't working. It says that there's too many parameters. Yes, we have a lot of parameters in this template. You have to go in and change your max input value on your PHP INI file. Things like this. Um, I went with Cloud Access. Everything works perfect. It's not a bug or anything, but, you know, some people need to, like, go in and edit things if you can find something that works and then you know that that hosting is reliable for you. Partnerships and affiliates. This is a, another, another way that you can um, bring income in. Uh, there's a lot of people in the Joomla community, a lot of other products that you can do affiliates with and that you can go ahead and say, okay, well, you join, you join this club and you know, I've got partners that make these extensions, uh, partner with security people, and you can offer them discount coupons. I think just, just about every template club now you can go to and see that, oh, if you join, you can unlock you know, coupons for all these other things. And by working with um, partners and affiliates, that can bring you more income in, and you can also start a dialogue with these other companies. You know? um, I've never been one to think that all the other companies that make templates were uh, you know, my competition. I always thought of them as um, doing great products and they offered something because I, I can offer uh, this kind of template, a template that has long hair or whatever. Somebody's going to come and find something they like from me. And by actually becoming partners or talking to them, then we can actually discuss things. You know? And within Joomla, you, know, you have that ability. And the number one thing is, you know, don't be afraid to take, take a risk. You know, if you think that, you know, the auto renew um, is not a good idea, try it. You know, um, don't, right now, you can't, your biggest thing is you're going to fail if you don't take chances and try new things. And thank you. And questions and comments? Comment, great presentation, yes. really interesting. Oh, thank you. I have a question as well. Uh, you talked about the change in the, the, the market, the Joomla market over the last, I think, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. depending on the time frame. How do, you, how do you see the next two or three years being? How do you see the, the future? Oh, that's hard to say. I mean, we have, we have Joomla 4 in the pipeline. Um, Joom, what, what's going to happen with Joomla 4? Uh, the question is, uh, right now, I think that we're doing really well in communicating as the project. Um, before, our biggest problem with Joomla that I saw was our backward compatibility issue that we had. You know, that one that one really hurt us. Great. Yeah. The problem was though, it wasn't all on Joomla. It was on all of us that do extensions and templates. But our problem is that we weren't part of the community. We and the community wasn't telling us, you know, there was very limited amount. If you remember, if you actually look at Joomla and the new releases now, they have a really long list of new releases before of new release information. Before you got like you go up and there'd be like five things. These five things work, and these are new things. But then you'd find twenty other things. So it's with the communication between the the project and the developers and the ecosystem now. I think that anything that happens with um, the breaking of Joomla um, in Joomla 4 will be taken care of. I've already looked at that, and I mean, we all know that it's probably going to be Bootstrap 4, 
So everybody that does my templates, um, I create them with Bootstrap 2 because that's what's internal inside of Joomla. So I'm just calling it internally inside of Joomla and not breaking the Joomla way because I always think about how I can work with Joomla internally. So I think, I think it really depends on Joomla 4, you know, and see, you know, if we can um, get some market. I, everywhere I go, there's new people coming into Joomla. You know, it's, it's a very small fraction. It used to be huge. But then again, I mean, we were back in the, the golden era of the CMS. You know, the, when Joomla started and WordPress started, you know, it was those years from like 2004 to like 2010 were the, the height of CMSs, you know. So as an extension developer or a template developer, I'd say, you know, um, you know, you also need to look at new technologies, you know, and just don't never be comfortable. That thing about not taking risks, um, I, I do other talks and I tell people, you know, never, never think that, you know, everything's okay and that I've learned enough and that um, this is fine. Um, we live in technology. Technology is changing every moment, you know. I, I go to all these different meetups about, you know, different JavaScript and stuff and find out, you know, well, what's, what's the future going to look like, you know. Do you run a, uh, do you, do you run a, a subscription site? Not for entity of Joomla, I run a Joomla based site which offers subscriptions to a, a, a non technical service tech. Okay. I'm thinking about doing it in the next year. Okay. So, any, any pitch holes you can tell us that you, you also discovered? Like you, you said, lifetime subscriptions was a mistake? Or? Yeah, well, lifetime subscriptions was a mistake. Um, <coughs> also, when, the, um, when times got tough, you know, we, we were making really great money in the beginning. Um, times got tough, and I started, uh, do, we started doing sales. You know, we started doing, uh, you know, 30%, um, 50%. Uh, then people expect sales. They, you know, and then it became, um, became a sale um, every holiday. You know, um, there's yeah. other, other template clubs like, um, you know, Joom, um, Joomla and Shack. Joomla and Joomla Shack and uh, uh -huh. here uh, the, the new um, Gavik Pro, Joom Art and stuff like that. They, they are now... The, the consolidation, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they are like spamming me essentially like I have... Like I have a subscription there already, but uh, I, I still have like with another email address, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to the newsletter. I get their 299 yearly uh, package essentially every month. Like I have every month a coupon for that. Yeah, it's hard. And I mean, they, you know, what they've done, I mean, that Gavik is a perfect example. Um, Gavik's model, um, that's when we put, our, um, we put our lifetime on for $99 for uh, a couple months because his deal was $99 lifetime subscription but you had to pay for support, pay extra for support. Okay. We thought this was great, and we thought, well, that's, that's a kind of cool model too, but um, after he did that, there wasn't a template out for a year, and then there was one template, and then all of a sudden, he started doing his other CMS that he builds. It's a small, lightweight CMS, and then he was gone. You know, um, Alexander, um, the, uh, our vice president, um, had wrote a really big article about how lifetime subscriptions can, can really hurt. You know, especially in the Joomla community. So it's that. It's, um, it's, it's everywhere. Like I, I have a couple of lifetime subscriptions uh, myself and I'm always thinking like, okay, how dumb did you have to be to do that? Because I have some of these subscriptions for now, five, six, seven years, and I still profit from it. Okay. And, uh, like I'm, I'm not complaining in the sense of, oh, I don't want that ever, but whenever I see it, I'm like, your product is still, like, these are products, for instance, hey, uh, there's a file roster, for instance, in there, or something like that. Like, they still have to pay up uh, for, for, for the space that I can use, for instance, web space and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, especially if it's, like, unlimited or something like that, like, they, they, they said, okay, you, you are essentially a little bit legitimate, uh, limited with the bandwidth, but that's all, you know? That's not really a big, a big stone or something like that. Yeah, no, it's it that that's a tough, tough thing. That's why I don't suggest it unless it's something that you don't have to. You're not paying for anything, or you don't have. You know, if you just have. Some yeah, or you don't have to maintain it. Anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that and um, you know, be careful with sales. And may I ask what you use internally for handling your subscriptions? Um, Akiva subscriptions? No, no. We, we are we use our own own component. Um, okay. Basically, we when we started. Um, 
God, I don't, I think it was called my memberships. Um, it was something back in the very first Joomla we used for a little while. And then we click, quickly found out we were using that and we were using Virtumart. And then we decided that the first thing we built was a ticketing system. And then we said, well, we need a membership system. So we wrote that. And then uh, they, we need to get out of Virtumart because we need to be able to maintain our own code. You know? <laughs> so, so we built a shopping cart. But uh, you know, we basically our intention was to um, release the shopping cart. But yeah. it, you know how big a shopping cart is. <laughs> uh, yeah. And do you uh, just use uh, PayPal for payment, or do you also uh, um, offer other? Uh, right now, we offer um, PayPal, and uh, we offer um, Two Checkout. Um, Two Checkout handles um, a lot of our credit card stuff. Um, we've looked at Authorize.net and a few other places. Um, really has to do with um, how the subscription model is working, you know, and a very interesting fact is um, Two Checkout got acquired um, by a company and now they've got acquired again and um, all of a sudden they, they turned off our account and said, um, you're wording on your website. Pardon me? Your wording on your website is not good. You're offering a lifetime subscription, I believe it was Club. They, had, they were having issues with the wording of my thing. So what? I had, yeah. I had to change the word club or whatever, and now I just got another warning from them because we had um, we had a lifetime up there for I think it was three ninety nine or whatever, and they said you can't offer this lifetime subscription, you can't do this. I said, well, you know what? I don't need that anyway. It was just up there for a little while because that's how I'm doing the lifetime now. Is I offer it every you know every six months or whatever, I'll turn on for a few days and you know see because we can't collect that many. So yes, this company is trying to dictate to me. My verbiage on my website, what what I can offer, you know. So okay, yeah, um, that's crazy. yeah. Time to go. This, this is <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, but just uh, reminded me that there was here a case uh, with some um, companies here in in, in Germany, and um, they, they they had big sales of uh, PayPal. and then they had a problem for being accused to. Uh, do uh, deals with Iran, and the problem is they are just selling uh, furniture. But the problem was they actually uh, killed their shop because they were so heavily relying on PayPal, and they could not resolve the issue. And PayPal is an American company, and they said just we freeze all the money that we have from you because you're doing bad stuff. And once this got resolved, the company was just broken. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is the reason why I asked uh, so also yeah. what you use for payment. So um, I do not have a subscription model, but I sell uh, uh, courses for people who want to train with me. And so this is also, I use PayPal, but they can also just do in regular invoices or they can pay also in cash. Mm -hmm. And so, but this is a lot of hustle. Yeah, because I, 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 I have the, um, the invoice from the, from the website and I also have to do a normal invoice just to have everything correct with tax collecting and so on. And so this is the reason why I asked how you do that. So I can give you some information perhaps. Uh, you know that uh, Mika Shot has created the Mika subscription system. What? And me, Ika Shop. You know Ika Shop? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, they have uh, now Ika subscription, and I am the author of the Ika invoice. Okay. And uh, I created uh, the invoice system that is based on a worldwide uh, data model that solves such kind of things. So you can put any text, general condition, specific words, uh, whatever that you want, depending on the customer the kind of customer, the country, you can put the text, the law of the specific country, sometimes for specific city in the country. So uh, if you need okay. to have a, a global solution to have a legal stuff, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, because in, uh, my problem is also I would need an, in, an export of okay. sales mm -hmm. to be um, importing into my financial software. And uh, you have the export uh, for um, accountancy application. I, actually, I do not wonder that much if a shop can do that. I'm wondering more about my financial software. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about words. Okay. Yeah. So, 
if you want, we can also uh, talk after this because um, I, I researched a couple of things. There are a couple of payment providers from Germany that give you essentially like all your invoices and all your subscription plans like in one software. But in the background, they also do PayPal, they do support overwhelming, they do essentially everything. Yeah. It's, so. It is, yeah, they take like 20 cents per, per, per subscription or something like that, per, mm -hmm. per booking. But um, so I, I looked at it because I had also a problem with my, with my tax attorneys and stuff like that. And they were all like, yeah, maybe it's a lot cheaper if you just pay the 20 cents per, per transaction. And then we have one export that we can just input there um, because if you get an audit and there's something wrong or something like that, mm -hmm. you get a lot more trouble and you have a lot more to pay. So as I said, like, mm -hmm. and as for what you give, um, I, I think it really heavily depends on what, uh, what your customer base is. For mm -hmm. instance, Jason okay. has to, to offer a credit card, I think, in the US. Mm -hmm. I mean, and okay, yeah, it's just, yeah, I think also some, some payment solutions are, um, I don't know how it's in, in America, but they are not very accepted in, in, in Germany. So yeah. Uh, yeah. even though there are German solutions, it's just not, nobody uses them. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, if you have support advising and you have PayPal, and I got a PayPal account, I will not I, be using support advising. Yeah, I, I use also PayPal because it's still quicker and, and, and better. Yeah, and in PayPal, I mean, they do offer like a pretty good protection as far as if you need to, you know, if the company didn't, yes, you know, yes, yes, whatever, you know, so that's, you know. Yes, and especially in the sense of, okay, um, uh, you as a customer know that, like, yes. support, uh, support advising does that as well for the customers, but uh, nobody actually knows that. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of perception, but that's what I mean, like, in, in Germany, for instance, credit cards are, like, not 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 frowned upon but they are not as important as for instance paypal or support advising or something like that like credit cards are the last thing that we need but i hear from other people in, in, in the us like if you don't have paypal you need to have credit card because otherwise nobody is essentially buying from you yeah <clears throat> yeah and i want to say right now that my company i'm not doing the the monthly plan at this point um, I've been trying to put it in. We, it's ready to go. I was hoping that I would at least have it up and running before here and be able to give you a report. Was it working or not? But I think that's something that, you know... Have you, have you tried to, 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 to test run? So you have an auto renewal system mm -hmm. and then you have a monthly system, which is lower, but over a year, more expensive than a year, mm -hmm. than a year. Yeah. So, so this uh, may be a thing to, to, to lower the risk. Once you see, okay, this is actually working, I get the yearly subscription to access cheaper. Is yeah. cheaper. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm bas basically, I mean, with Joomla, um, we like options. You know, when you go in the back of Joomla, you know, that's the thing that WordPress people always say, oh, it's like you understand. Well, it's just got a lot of options for you. And that's what we have with like the club plans. You know, we've got this option, this option, this option. Just cut it down yeah. to two, you know, I mean, that's, I'm thinking that the lifetime plan is replaced by the, the $12 a month, you know. Um, I still need to figure out how that's actually going to work within the, the scope of doing the, uh, of making sure that, you know, they just don't come and download everything and then cancel it, you know. So that's one thing I'm working with PayPal on right now. Okay, um, I think one thing, uh, how do you prevent that is really regular updates. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, you can download everything, but that's going to be the newest version in two months. Just very little bit if something changed. So people will see, okay, they're actually doing stuff. Yeah. So I think this is the safest way to, to keep people ongoing. Exactly. And um, like I was saying about like cloud access is um, that you have an API if you're doing Joomla stuff. Um, and I, I moved stuff over there and basically... Um, I'm going to start to offer um, hosting as the upsell, so where you can get hosting for um, 3 to $5 a month or whatever for it, and we launch it right onto your server for you. So if you want the quick start package um, of our template, you can go ahead and say, okay, here, here's my details, and then, you know, two minutes later, it's live on the, the server. So they have that capability. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think other, other people are going to start to do that too, but uh, Cloud Access has a, a pretty cool API to do things like that. 
Right. Thank you. And there's uh, my contact information if you uh, want to reach out to me and let me know um, how your business is doing or if you have any questions. Thank you. And we'll do lunch.